Hong Kong, at the heart of Asia, is a trading center famous for its expansive skyline, deep harbor, vibrant lifestyle, and luxury shopping. For a few days each year, the spotlight in Hong Kong falls squarely on contemporary art. Art Basel Hong Kong promises to be one of the greatest art events of the world. Last year's fair topped international revenue, making it the most profitable event in the world. I am here to meet the leading figures of the art world, museum curators, dealers, collectors, and most of all, the artists. You know, I think any uh, uh, photography, any, uh, especially in the street, have impact on people. The best way to measure it is to see, you know, in different contexts where it has been done. But for me, it's always start from art, and then from wherever it is, it touch people depending on their own story. And that's always the beginning of a longer journey, which is my journey as an artist, but the journey of the people interacting with the work. What is it for you to work, you know, from the street to the institution and now to a scale which might be in someone's home? How do you uh, think about your work on all those different platforms? You know, I think work of art should be visible anywhere and uh, one helps the other that's why i've always combined the walk in the street and walk in museum and walks in gallery they've always helped each other and i'm having a larger show here in hong kong that's open to the public where people can interact and take their photo and print it and there's uh, more than 30 walks presented there and films so it's a way also to bring people inside the walk and let people see the difference depending on the country how the people reacted to the walk now this is what I love about Art Basel Hong Kong. You turn around and you see works being created right here on the spot. We're here today watching um, Nezaket Ikichi making artworks literally um, in front of us. Will this work uh, soon be in a museum? Possibly. Um, at least it's being made here in front of us at the fair. At Art Basel Hong Kong, over 200 galleries from around the world represent the very best of contemporary art. In the booming Asian market, demand is high. An estimated 85% of the works are sold during the exclusive VIP preview. We are looking at the work. It's um, one artist in the whole booth, and his name is Tadashi Kawamata. And uh, Mrs. Shin, could you tell us a few words about the exhibition here that we're seeing? Yeah, Kawamata is some of the major projects uh, that he created, the models and the maquette. When he was asked by a museum in Zurich to create some project, he found a women's only swimming pool. And he thought it is very much representative of Protestantism. His way of doing project is to always try to break artistic boundaries. I expect a lot of museum people, curators and the museum director are coming to Hong Kong. I am hoping that they will be interested in, you know, uh, acquisition. Incredible uh, taxidermized deer is here in the middle of the fair looking at uh, the visitor and um, making us question really uh, all of the different forms that art is taking today. Uh, quite surprisingly, you wouldn't imagine that a deer with full of antlers and a beautiful tree that emanates from it is actually um, uh, one of the most surprising contemporary artworks we'll probably see today. Here's a great work by Xu Longsen. A monumental Chinese scroll revisiting the traditional Chinese contemporary style of painting and done here in a contemporary fashion, floating through the air in a beautiful uh, degradé of India ink wash. Art Basel Hong Kong is a cultural wonderland for collectors who fly in from all over the world. They come here to fall in love with new art and find the works they've long been looking for, but also to have the chance to meet their favorite artists and develop fruitful relationships with galleries. I really love being at Art Basel Hong Kong. Every year I've been since you've had it, and I just learn things every time I come. And that's what I love about coming. When you come to Art Basel Hong Kong, 
you don't have any expectations. It's always a surprise. There's always something unique, something wonderful, something about learning and discovering. And you get to see what's happening in the Asia Pacific Rim, which I find so exciting. The Asia Pacific Rim has always, to me, been about things about the new cities, the excitement, the the thing that is not the European aesthetic. It describes the cultural explosion that's going here, on here and, and what I call the aesthetic climate change. It's, it's changing, it's moving at a rapid rate and nothing describes it better than Art Basel. I can see something that I haven't seen before and the more I look at it, the more I think. The more I think, the more I want to broaden my cultural horizons and I, that's what excites me and that's what I want to collect. I want to think, collect things that broaden my horizon rather than to confirm what I know. Hong Kong's the hub of Asia. It's easy to get to from China, it's easy to get from Japan, Manila, Indonesia. And so it's got a very easy focus and it's a wonderfully vibrant city with exciting things going on. And of course it's been encouraged, the arts have been encouraged. There's lots of very good things happening here and they have a tax effective regime here which makes it attractive to buy things here as well. So I've been coming here for the last however many years I've been running, 10 or whatever it is, and you see it grow every year. It's very hard to resist temptation. Temptation is very difficult, but I've made a rule a long time ago, never buy on impulse. I always want to think about the artwork before I buy. A lot of the artists here I'm very familiar with, so if I'm familiar with the oeuvre of the artist and it's a significant enough work, I would probably come in straight away. Uh, this same from Vanuatu as well, so, and his way of using the dots is, is really imaginative. They're like lenses for memory. So he paints the canvas and then he puts the glue on top, they're all glues. And they retain, to me, retain the memory of, of the narrative of what he's painting about. At Art Basel Hong Kong, the galleries are the tastemakers. Walking into some of these booths is like a mini museum show. This quality comes with a high price tag and millions of dollars of art is displayed by leading artists. Ethering started becoming, uh, started working in um, New York uh, in the 80s and uh, he studied as a graffiti artist, he studied what, was called, what were called the subway drawings, they're actually drawings that were done in the subway, and then evolved on tarps and later uh, on a sculpture. Richard Prince is one of America's most iconic and important contemporary artists. The photograph behind, uh, it's uh, very, very iconic because it really belongs to a to a period. He was looking absolutely at the American myth, at the representation of masculinity, how the real Marlboro man has certain feature. So we are in front of Anish Kapoor's, uh, one of Anish Kapoor's uh, concave mirrors, which are really iconic for the artist. And you can almost um, jump inside of the surface or look at its, um, how it captures the whole scene around us. All these words then play a lot on the idea of the perception, how you perceive uh, the work uh, and how the words get reflected, and also the idea of sound. Actually, if you go closer, you have a kind of an echo. For the first time this year, a new side fair, Art Central, is being held. It was established by the same people who pioneered the original Art Hong Kong in 2008, which was then sold to the Art Basel conglomerate in 2012. The success of Art Central, alongside Art Basel Hong Kong, just shows how big contemporary art has become in Hong Kong. I think exceeded our greatest expectations. Uh, we've got 77 galleries here. Uh, many from Asia, more than half, 65%. So, you know, we've got a very good cross-section of Asian and Western art. Uh, some of it being seen for the first time, so that's really exciting. Uh, I mean, there's no question that Art Central would not exist without Art Basel, and it is a satellite fair, um, which exists really because of the strength of, of Art Basel and the fact that an awful lot of galleries can't get into Art Basel. When you look around the hall, it is packed. So we're 
thrilled with the reception that we've had. With the, the city has really turned out. Hong Kong is an exciting and, uh, as you say, booming city, but at the same time, in terms of the arts, there's no question Hong Kong Art Week is the time to be here and to experience the best of what the city has to offer. In a very short amount of time, the international art world picked up on, on Hong Kong as a really important center. The growth of the art fair was a really important one because it allowed galleries access to this market, which is not just Hong Kong and the collectors that are based here, but also the region. So you have countries like Japan and Taiwan, Korea, Indonesia, Singapore, and Australia as well, which ended up being very important markets for us. During Art Week, amazing installations transform the city day and night. One of my absolute highlights has been the monumental light projection by Chinese artist Cao Fei, turning Hong Kong's tallest building into a giant Atari. Is it the first time that you work on such a monumental scale? Yeah, it's my first time to work on this uh, big scale and, and part of the city. I mean, the movement is uh, belong the city, it's like habit of the city. And also Hong Kong have a very uh, strong game culture. The people love game. So I think it's a good choice to use the gay symbol for, for the city. There you have it, Art Basel Hong Kong 2015. Inspiring, creative, at times chaotic. I'm Anais Lelouch. Thanks for joining me.